Welcome back, y'all, to our new podcast, The Light in My Shadow, sponsored by Jai Bhakti Yoga Foundation. The Light in My Shadow is a personal recovery journey through BPD, borderline personality disorder, bipolar disorder, suicidal ideation, and complex trauma. I educate and share techniques and practices of Ayurveda and yoga to address mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health, highlighting the heavy issues hidden in the tissues. I realized that in order for me to change my life, to stop these patterns, this was a hard realization, but one that triggered this recovery journey. I am your host, Christina, and I have been living with bipolar disorder, manic depression, suicidal ideation and complex trauma since 1995 and officially diagnosed with BPD in 2022. I share my story and open up with no filter about my personal struggles, challenges and successes. This is my journal, my thoughts, my interpretation of how to holistically manage these disorders using the resources that resonate, and of course, leaving the rest. The journey here of recovery is very difficult, and it's very different for each of us. This is a space where I feel safe opening up to you all in hopes that I may be able to shine a light in your shadow. I want to preface that I am not a doctor as of this date, but I am an Ayurvedic health consultant practicing freely in the city of New Orleans. Therefore, everything that I discuss in these episodes are suggestions from an Ayurvedic and yogic application that have been working for me and merely suggestions for you, as these are based on my dosha and specific needs. You can learn more about my offerings at Jai Bhakti Yoga Foundation's website, jbyfnola.org, or follow me on Instagram and Facebook, or even subscribe on YouTube at jbyfnola. Thank you all for being here, for listening. It truly means a lot to me, more than you'll ever realize. If you would like to support the mission of bringing holistic resources to individuals in mental, emotional, and physical hardship, please share, rate, and review this podcast with them. Without further ado, let's get started. Instead of blaming um, and shaming those who have become abusive, I believe it's far more important to and encourage people to take responsibility for their behavior and for changing their behavior. This involves exploring your childhood for clues to your present behavior and releasing repressed and suppressed emotions towards what we would call your original abusers and learning strategies for dealing with anger and stress in more constructive ways. Uh, That's what we're going to be talking about in this episode. This is something that I also struggle with a lot. I used to think that everybody else is the problem and it wasn't me. And now it's time to recognize where I may be falling short of myself. So it's kind of like I want to have someone to pour everything into and then when they start withdrawing i start to panic and i just i hang on (laughs) um until someone better comes along or um that i think that they are coming around so i find myself making excuses i'm sure a lot of you do the same for their bullshit and of course for mine. And I didn't take any responsibility for my behavior maybe at the time. So it could be because I've maybe lowered my standards just because I wanna have somebody in my life, even if it's temporarily, no matter how shitty it feels because I don't wanna be alone. 
So this is what I'm struggling with now. And where do I discover those times where I need to take responsibility for myself and also recognize when it's not just my fault, but maybe it's also a combination of a lack of communication. And so this episode is about how self-sabotaging behavior and emotional abuse trauma can ruin every romantic relationship for borderlines. Here we go. See you there. There's a lot that comes into play with what we're going and growing through together in this particular episode. And so what I'm going to read to you and share with you from my research and what I've been working on personally, just to help myself grow and and become a better human being for myself and for my future partner is to work through some of these methods and uh, some of these behaviors that I'm about to share with you. And some of this shit's really fucking hardcore. Like it really hits home. So when it does hit home, take a moment to pause. You can pause this episode, this video, this podcast, and just reflect on what just came up for you because chances are shit's just hitting the same kind of shit's hitting home for me too. And it's the reason why I'm sharing it with you guys. So, you know, like I said earlier in the pre-intro, I felt like maybe I had just lowered my standards because I didn't want to be alone. And the reason for that's because when you're told you're worthless and you've expressed how you want to be loved and communicated with only to be ghosted the next day or that there were behaviors, uh, messages, experiences that you felt spellbound for immediately, really, and then it all just stops. And that's it because it's easy to hurt you, you know? It's kind of like you're a child and it just really doesn't feel good. And I'm thinking at times, am I the one to blame for these words or being told such harsh things and and being treated as such because I was just learning how to love. I I really am still struggling with what that even looks like and, and what that even looks like in a healthy relationship. Like, what the fuck is that? Our experience, like for me, our experience of how my partner wanted to be loved without fully understanding, like I... I wouldn't understand, I wouldn't know. So I'm trying to learn this as I'm evolving into what the hell does love mean? What does it look like? And and how to even begin to, to explore that. And so I end up falling for these representatives and maybe a lot of you do too, that you, you just, you fall for these representatives only to be used, taken advantage of, forgotten about. <laughs> You know, I find myself back in these relationships where I'm constantly kind of forgiving the others or I'm like making excuses just because of whatever. Like I feel like, oh, well, oh, I see the good in them. So it, there's, a, there's a reason why they're treating me like this right now. Maybe they're struggling with something. So I'm just going to let this pass. Right. Like it's kind of like, no, like that shit doesn't fly. You gotta get used to knowing that that's not cool. (laughs) And you're not supposed to be treated like that. You're not supposed to be talked to and mistreated or get whatever their fuckery is taken out on you. Like that's not fair. So I really love what my friend David said, you know, that quote where life is what you make of it. So he said, I chose to make it fair. And if life is what you make of it, then yeah, make the choice to make it fair. Make the choice that you're able to make those changes. And so instead of seeing the good in them, which we always do, also recognize the mistreatment and those harsh words because no one should ever disrespect somebody. 
as my friend Sam once said, respect is the highest form of love. And if somebody is not going to offer that to you, well, then fuck them. They, they don't need to be in your life. You know, a really hard truth to keep in mind is that the healing journey is just that. It's a journey. It's not something that we are miraculously healed and everything is great and perfect with rainbows and unicorns and all of this magic that we see in life because life is magical but yet at the same time if we're struggling with some shit and we've been struggling with it all of our life it's not always going to be rainbows and unicorns we're always going to see both sides and sometimes we'll steer more towards the darker side than the rainbow side because that's what we're growing through that's what we're experiencing that's what we're working through it's different types of cognitive behavioral issues that that stem from borderline depression um complex ptsd sexual trauma suicidal ideation it all of these different disorders are tools that are going to help us to really grow in our strength to discover what happened to me instead of what happened or what's wrong with me so you know this is an important time for us to take all of this shit that we're dealing with and use it as our superpower you know like we're not different just because we're diagnosed with borderline personality disorder or complex trauma because we were abused and sexually taken advantage of and all kinds of shit that at six years old should never happen to somebody let alone what you all have gone and grown through i understand this is where we're at right now and we're using all of that to make ourselves better and not only ourselves better, but those around us, those that we relate to, you and I, we're able to support one another and lean on each other and continue to reach out to me and send me those messages and emails and, and notes because this is the information and the tools that I use so that I let you know, like I hear you and I see you and I recognize where you're at right now, all of you. and. This is where we're at right now. This is where these tools, we're not going to be healed. We're not going to be cured, but we're definitely going to be transformed. I can promise you that we can definitely be transformed through this work. I know it because I'm living it. This is why I started this shit. This is why I'm talking to you. It's fucking real. This is why, you know, um, it's really to discover what happened, to discover what happened to me instead of what's wrong with me there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you buddy there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing wrong with me either okay we just we're evolving in ways that we didn't know we had to as Ily says we're evolving in ways that we didn't know we had to so this is a super hard thing to do as you well know and as you can only as you can only imagine right um mostly because of the emotional abuse, you know, that, um, that forms attachment and those feelings of abandonment and that loneliness that consumes us. That's what comes up for me. That's what comes up when these relationships begin to start. According to some research I'm going to share with you all and throw in some of my personal tidbits and then also what I've been working on through some tools to help me uh, really work on myself throughout this process so that I don't ruin every relationship that I get into because so far um, I've got a really great track record of ruining every single one. So according to this research um, study by Dr. Gunderson, um, the relational style of someone with borderline personality disorder is characterized within that DSM-4 that I talked to you guys about earlier. Back in like episode one, I told you I'd be quoting some of those things from some of these books and these materials. So here you are. Um, and so in this, um, in this DSM-4, borderline personality disorder criteria is known as intense and unstable, marked further by abandonment fears, and by vacillating between idealization and devaluation. 
And this is very true. It's exactly how I feel all the time. It, especially that abandonment fear. And then I, and I, I always mess up this word, but I do vacillate between that idea, that idealization and then the devaluation. It's like I go the bipolar portion. I go from one extreme to the other and borderlines mirror these two prototypic variations. And I'm going to tell you what they are. And these are variations of insecure attachments, which is something I know that I am very, very, very hands up right here. If you're watching, you're seeing my hand up because I am guilty of that, of the attachments. And there's two different versions of that. That's the preoccupied form of attachment, which is marked by the pleas for attention, the pleas for help, that clinging, either you're alternating with those unresolved and fearful experiences, those forms of attachment. And then that's also marked by denial, confusion, fearfulness about that dependency. So it turns into like that codependency thing. And then you don't want to be codependent. You don't want to be looking at your phone, waiting for them to text you back. You want to become an adult. You want to know that they have a life, you have your life, and things are still working the way that they're working and everything's good. But yet at the same time, you're just, you're attached. You really want that validation. You need to hear from this person all day long. Otherwise you feel like they're cheating on you or they're doing something else that you're not important to them anymore. And it's not true, but we go through this rabbit hole, this downward spiral of creating these illusions, these vacillations, these idealizations. And then we go down into, oh, well, they don't value me anymore. Oh, they don't like me anymore. Oh, they're, they're not interested in me. I'm just going to move on. And that's where we start to create the chaos, right? Borderlines, here we go. Seek chaos. Everything is nice and wonderful. And then you get bored and then you have to start up again, right? So it's... <laughs> Wow, so we're talking about hitting it on the nail in this one. And it could not be more on the nose about me specifically and some of you, I'm sure. And I'll tell you, man, I get attached. Once I let my guard down, I am, especially if you love bomb the hell out of me in the beginning. Listen, if you love bomb the hell out of me at the beginning, you better not ever stop for the rest of your entire life because <laughs> That right there is going to drive me and my BPD out of control. <laughs> and I'm sure you don't want that, but I digress. If you love bomb the hell out of somebody and then you withdraw and you give them all sorts of attention and then you take that away, this is going to go into what Gunderson wrote about in these notes about rejection and the rejection sensitivity for our borderlines rejection sensitivity is a trait and it's closely related to abandonment fear and the intolerance of aloneness which is right here this girl i digress which have a long association with borderline personality disorder yours truly disassociation and self-injurious behaviors and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to explain to you really quickly what self-injurious behaviors are. Suicidal ideation and those of you that have progressed into suicide attempts. That's part of the self-sabotaging and self-defeating and self-mutilating behaviors. Um, these are self-injurious. Okay, so these are part of that. And a part of that will go into self-sabotaging. Those of you that do cutting, um, if you have attempted a couple of suicide attempts, um, there is help for you. And I want you to know that you and I have gone through quite a bit. We're here and we're still alive and we're still working through a lot of things together. Suicide help lines really do help and they do work. And I'm going to put that information in the show notes below so that you have access to that. And it's completely anonymous as well. So you don't ever have any fear. Remember, we're talking about that fearfulness, that rejection sensitivity. So I want you to be bold 
and take charge of your health, mental health, emotional health, by making that phone call. Part of these self-injurious behaviors have to do with that, that disassociation. When we feel abandoned, when we feel alone, how do we seek help? How do we reach out? We need attention, right? We're starving for attention. Suicidal ideation, suicide attempts, suicide notes, suicidal thoughts, all of that is cry for help. And it's very important that we recognize that. Other variations of these forms are also the cutting for those of you that are cutters that need help as well, that there are resources for you that I will share in the show notes below. Um, some of us will go into drug abuse and start to become addicted and have form addictive behaviors. Other forms would be impulsive, dangerous behaviors, um, doing things that are outside normal behaviors. And who knows what normal behaviors are nowadays, right? But just outside of things that are safe. So things that you know may have quite a catastrophic consequence to it. And lastly, um, and I have to say that this is where I would have found the most harm for myself. And this is where I will be able to speak from my experience is um, sleeping around for a sense of validation, uh, finding comfort in all the wrong places. And sometimes it could be very dangerous. So um, these are often prompted by aversive interpersonal events, such as rejection and criticisms. And again, going back into that aloneness and not wanting to be alone. And this is all part of a research study that I'm also going to share in the show notes with you that you can dive into even further because boy, did I go down the rabbit hole when I found this one. Further investigation of this particular research study confirms what I had been dreading all along. And another hard reality for me to face was that people who have an insecure relational phenotype experience stressful intrapersonal events more drastically in that intrapersonally preoccupied or needy people are more disposed to respond to intrapersonal stressors by becoming depressed that hit me really hard really hard because i find that i am a needy person because i do need that validation because I do want to feel important to you. I want you to know how important you are to me because I want to pour myself into you so much. I don't want to just lose myself in you, but I do want to pour myself into you so that we have something to share together, that we do everything together, like you're my best friend, you know? But then at the same time, I need to find out, or not necessarily find out, but I need to make sure that I'm not emotionally, repeatedly abusing myself, repeatedly emotionally abusing myself. Because each time that I do let myself go through this type of shit, I end up regretting it because I lost myself again in somebody else. And I feel like now I'm in a space where I have secured more boundaries and I'm beginning to recognize it's okay to be alone. I don't need to be with somebody. I don't have to have someone in my life. I'm smart. I have a lot going on and bringing someone in is more than likely going to become a distraction and really appreciating what it's like to be alone. I remember way back in the day, my best girlfriend, Dana used to say, Man, it's like every time you're by yourself for not even like a minute, somebody else is there to pick up those pieces for you. You've never been alone. And it's true. How do you live a life alone and grow and understand who you truly are? You really can't do that if you've never been alone. So the reason why these traumas from the past and emotionally abusive traumas ruin our relationships is because we're still stuck in the same patterns. We're not letting ourselves grow. We're not letting ourselves appreciate what it's like to be alone, what it's like to go kayaking by yourself, what it's like to go on a trip for yourself. I'm huge on taking trips on my own because 
I really love exploring nature by myself and exploring a new town and a city by myself. And yeah, I would love a companion to do that with, but at the same time, these are those moments where I can treat myself and spoil myself as much as I want to without anyone questioning anything, any way of my spending, anything that I'm eating, anything that I'm buying, anything that I'm experiencing. It's it's my experience, it's my journey, it's my self-care, it's my yoga practice, you know? And I want you all to experience that too. So take that time to understand that if you're still stuck in these patterns, it's because you're emotionally abusing yourself. You are creating your own trauma. So we need to start breaking those patterns. We got to start doing that together. Releasing repressed and suppressed emotions towards these original abusers, like we talked about in the beginning, and learning strategies for dealing with anger and stress in more constructive ways is crucial when it comes to stopping this abuse like i was just saying it means we need to walk away from an emotionally and or physically abusive relationship and i know that shit is fucking hard to do because i've been there i've been there y'all i know i know it's hard i know baby steps strategy first you got to get right with yourself You got to learn that you are worth it because this is something that I learned. Learning to value one's self-worth, acknowledging what happened, recognizing your triggers, and then making conscious decisions when strength is needed to learn appropriate strategies to be more assertive in the relationship. And I'm talking about the relationship with yourself because that comes first. Then the relationship with your original abuser or your current abuser. But you gotta recognize the original abuser, wherever and whoever that was, because that is what created the triggers and the traumas that have continued to keep you in the samskaras, the patterns, the cycles that you're still in, that you and I are still in. So once we recognize that, because we've got a lot of them, but once we've recognized that, we start breaking those little cycles one by one, bit by bit, kind of like those of you that follow my yoga programs and we talk about the koshas and we go through those different layers of our, of our physiology, of ourselves, this is where we're at. It's, it's, we're starting from the very essence of that outer layer. And we're going to start working our way back into our core. This is where we learn how to strengthen. This is where we learn how to make conscious decisions. We create these strategies. And let's face it, if we are the abuser, which you and I have both been, then we need to work on those core issues. And those are the core issues that are causing the behaviors and the attitudes that we are continuing to sustain. We are not going to have a healthy, beautiful relationship with nobody if we're not able to have a healthy, beautiful relationship with ourselves. Ram Dass once said, and this is my mantra, and I hate to say a cop out for me to get out of relationships I don't want to be in, but honestly, it's Ram Dass. Can't go wrong. The more conscious person in the relationship, will give the other room to grow. And if you're familiar with the Beatles guru, who's my guru and my teacher, and also the school that I am currently attending, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, um, he adds, one can only give to others to the extent that one can give to themselves only. One can only give to others to the extent that one can give to themselves only. Some of you, like me, (laughs) are gonna realize that the root cause of your failing relationships, whether it be at work or at home and romantically, stem from a pattern of being emotionally abused and emotionally abusing ourselves continuously. And finding ourselves in these similar relationships that 
start off great and slowly transform into the nightmares we had been wanting to avoid. And some of you will begin to muster the courage and strength to get out of your emotionally abusive relationship. Let's just call them ears. Let's get out of our ears. And while others will need more time to discover that strength from within, it just takes time. Some of us have that fear of being alone, which is where I have been. This is kind of my, where I get stuck and backslide into at times. Hence the relationship with Mr. Nothing but an inconsistent booty call, if you remember that from the first episode. And um, I'll keep texting and blowing up your phone only to be ghosted the next day, sir. Or remaining besties with the one person that makes you feel like total shit. So for some of us, it could be a financial situation. And for others of you, there's that issue of, which this is where I fall most of the time, there's still a chance to make it right. Bottom line is y'all that (laughs) we need to understand why, why we are being abused. What is the cause of it? And are we contributing to it? And are we going to do something consciously? Like what are we going to do consciously to make the effort to stop? Really, for me, for the first one, I just got up and left. And then for the second, I just stopped messaging back. I just stopped, stopped talking because what's the point? Why drive myself crazy for someone who's not in alignment with me, right? So what I've been learning to do once is I learned the root of my behavior And it's to learn how I finish the unfinished business of my karma that I've created and what has created these patterns within my life, those past lives, what have I done? And just working through that. And there's gonna be some instances through meditation and yoga and mantra and different techniques that I use that are going to provide me some different paths and even along my journey, this healing journey, this almost like spiritual kind of journey in a way, I'm gonna find familiar roads. I'm gonna see familiar roads. I'm gonna see familiar patterns. I'm gonna wanna go down that same road because it's easier. But I mean, you can't master handstand practice if you're not progressing, you're you're not practicing every single day, you're not doing something different to push yourself up into this experience, right? To see a new perspective. So in order for you to grow into that particular experience and master whatever posture or handstand or headstand or whatever it is that's challenging for you, you need to tackle it, you gotta face it. You gotta find the smaller goals to achieve the big goal. And so it means maybe changing the course of your path. That for me is is basically where I'm at with that. A lot of this has to come back to us learning how to manage our feelings of pain, rage, fear, guilt, especially concerning our own abuse and neglect towards others so we can stop repeating the same shit with other partners, for real. It's time that we start to dismantle why, why we've tolerated this bullshit for so long, (laughs) really for so long. And we're going to have really low times and they're going to be really dark. They're going to suck. And we're going to have really, really, really high times. And there's going to be some days that are super better than others. (laughs) And there are going to be some days that no matter where we are, we're never going to feel like we're making any progress. I get it, you know, but at the end of the day, you're taking, you're making the effort. You're taking one foot and you're putting the at one in front of the other and you're able to make it, you know, we're never going to be free from anxiety and worry hundred percent or even our own bouts of depression. 
I can promise you that I still go through it myself. All right. But these are aspects and traits that are going to come with the ebbs and flows of our growth and within our life. That's really what it comes down to. And it's at these times that we need to dive deep within ourselves so that we can evolve and so that we can grow together and so that we can reach those higher states of consciousness together, that we can really experience what it's like to truly love ourselves wholly to the extent that we want to give to others. And that it's going to take time to do for those of us that are in this space, especially that are really deep down in that space. Trust me, I know (laughs) years of it. I know it doesn't come easy. It gets harder than it does to get easy at times, you know, you get it. But a big reason why most of us, most all of our romantic relationships fail is because there's a couple of reasons and I'll tell you. One, we lack confidence. Big time. I do. I compare myself to the society norm of, you know, enhancements and feel like I need that in my life, you know, like that would make me prettier or more attractive if my chest was bigger or my waist was smaller or my hips were bigger, you know, my eyelashes were longer, (laughs) my lips were bigger, I, you know, my hair was longer, I compare myself to these beautiful women or who I think that my potential suitor will be looking or checking out and then I end up getting jealous and then there's my confidence that goes out the window and then I just don't want to be with anybody because I don't want to feel myself getting hurt and getting anxiety over it and you just witnessed me go through an entire episode for like a little tiny mini second. So (laughs) lack of confidence is one. Two is the lack of security with ourselves and our partner, which I just experienced. Falling in love too fast, which has happened before, and I've learned my lesson. (laughs) Getting attached, which happens often. Having a lack of trust in our partner and worse ourselves, which I just expressed to you. (laughs) Um, Notice a change in connection to our partner or from our partner. And then we begin to retreat. And then there's, of course, the lack of communication, which is always number one. Additional behaviors that destroy the relationships are the domination part, that need to control, verbal assaults, smothering, constant criticism, and continual blaming, abusive expectations, emotional blackmail, unpredictable responses, constant chaos or creating crisis, character assassination, gaslighting, sexual harassment, clear and consistent patterns, overt and overt, uh, covert abuse, overt and covert abuse. We talked about that in, I believe, episode two, intentional and unintentional abuse and malvolent abuse, which is not very nice. It's kind of the worst one. So the more we evolve in recognizing these patterns that keep us stuck, and in yoga we call them samskaras, that make it hard for us to have stability in our lives, the more we recognize that we're evolving. There are three things that I've observed about attachment. And we call this shenpa, if you follow the Buddhist traditions. Our storylines will always fuel it. It comes with an undertow. It always has a consequence, which frequently are not pleasant. Then there's the post attachment to that attachment. We become hooked by the guilt and the self denigration for having been taken over once again. The story can go on for years with one attachment setting off a chain reaction that gives birth to further attachment and so on and so forth. So for me, as I'm coming to learn is that I am an under controlled person, which means that I respond or react very impulsively. I tend to 
quickly respond or quickly react based out of an emotion towards whatever the circumstance is, as opposed to somebody that might be over controlled. And these are people that respond or react when they take their time to assess the situation. Again, another reason why relationships tend to fail because we don't give people the amount of space that they need to process. We want to get things done immediately and it doesn't work like that. We have to give people time to process. When I have my on days, for example, when I have my yoga self, right? Quote unquote, you know, the bunny ears yoga self is coming through the yoga teacher version of myself, then I'm very much an over-controlled person. If I'm in my role at work, dealing with customers or people that are a little bit more aggressive or that require a little bit more attention or that I see myself in them, then I will be responding to these individuals in a more controlled state. I don't react as quickly or as I would normally. But when I'm on my own and I'm just doing me and say I'm driving or something, triggered me or something like that earlier, now I'm not in the best of head spaces and I feel like I'm rushing or whatever the circumstance might be, then I find myself emotionally reacting or being under controlled. So it's really hard for me personally to find that balance at times when I am in a very triggered state. So reflecting on the list of abusive behaviors and attitudes, I also find myself fucking convicted by both giving and receiving emotional abuse because like I stated in the past episode, even my best, best, best friend called me out for being the abuse becoming the abuser. So it is extremely challenging to live this life because it's extremely difficult. It's lonely, it's miserably misunderstood, and it feels like at times I'll never find someone to grow with or someone who's willing to grow with me beyond the superficial aspects and appreciate what lies beneath the fuck show <laughs> that they see and that I am. Um, but it's a really fun and entertaining show. <laughs> I'm like an emotional bull in a china shop, as you can say, where I just go emotionally crazy, but yet at the same time, I mask it really, really well. So, you know, like, what do you mean that happened? <laughs> or as my friend calls me, bendita. So this definitely plays right into a form of gaslighting. And it also form, falls right into the constant chaos and creating a crisis and repeating the fucking cycle over and over again. Because why? Well, emotional abuse, or as Dr. Engel states, that emotional abuse damages another person, regardless of whether there is conscious intent to do so or not. So this is a good place for a breather, y'all, because I know it's a lot to take in. And... Um, if you want to give us a pause, go right ahead and pause, but I'm going to keep on plugging right away. So, so this is where it's kind of like recognizing that the problem is not the problem. It's the response and reaction that creates and enhances the problem. So when you don't do the habitual thing, you're bound to feel some pain. I call it the detox. That's what I call it, the detox. You've been doing the same predictable thing to get away from that uneasy, uncomfortable, vulnerable feeling for so long, and now you're not. And this requires getting used to practicing kindness and patience with yourself. Getting ourselves free from attachment or what we call shempa is not easy, okay? The attachment is as powerful as addiction. As the Buddhist teacher Zigar Kontru has said, the urge to get even, the power of craving and potency, if you have it, 
It's like a magnetic force pulling us in a familiar direction. Really. The urge to get even. I know a lot of you have gone through that. The power of craving, that potency if you have it. It's like a magnetic force pulling us in a familiar direction. Ain't that the fucking truth? So we opt again and again for short-term gratification that in the long run keeps us stuck yet again in the same cycles. There it is, y'all. Finally getting to the root of it, right? We just keep opting in again and again for that short-term gratification because we don't want to be alone or we have some sort of fear. So something that it's... It's really important for me. And I know that I say so something, I say so all the time, y'all be more mindful of that. But it's mostly becoming more comfortable with embracing being uncomfortable. So that's what we gotta be working on. Being okay with not being okay. Being okay with not being comfortable. We have to find, discomfort to find comfort because that's how we're going to keep evolving ain't that something i like that though it's like having a conversation that at one time would have been really uncomfortable and for me now that i'm learning how to embrace these moments of discomfort i'm being able to have those uncomfortable conversations that i used to have a lot of fear to have i didn't want to have those conversations because i was afraid to hurt somebody now The only person that I'd be hurting is myself if I'm not having those conversations. If I'm not honoring my boundaries, well then what the fuck do I need that person in my life for if they're going to cause me more pain? I'm already in shit. I don't need more. So this is a really, really awesome time to take a moment to just thank them for a really good time and move on. You know, this is the time where you're reflecting with yourself and you're creating borders and boundaries and establishing healthy relationships with yourself and then with others. One can only give to the extent that they can give. One can only give to themselves to the extent that one can give to others. Like you have to be able to give to yourself enough so that you can fill others. Otherwise you're only pulling from an empty cup. And if if you're not able to create those borders and boundaries to have healthy relationships, then you're gonna continue to fall back into the same patterns. This is why in order to not keep getting stuck in those patterns, you have to start working on what does it feel like to feel love for you? What does that feel like? Is it hugging, kissing, snuggling, touch? Maybe this is an opportunity for you to take the five love languages test and see what love language is yours. And maybe that's what you need in order to align yourself with. Something that I like to do is to doshically align myself with somebody as an Ayurvedi so i use my dosha assessment and i find out what my dosha is what is my prakriti what elements make me who i am and then i seek somebody that's going to create a balance for me in ayurveda everything is about balance and having proper alignment with your significant other through whatever it is that like increases like and the opposite will increase or decrease the opposite So you need to make sure that you're aligning yourself correctly. We'll get into that in a couple episodes later when I start talking about Ayurveda. But that's kind of a little teeny tiny nugget of information to go check out the website, jbyfnola.org, so you can look at the Ayurveda portion, get a little bit more of understanding. Because that's how I feel when you can align your doshas to somebody, that helps a lot because then you're creating a natural balance. So going back to emotional abuse, most people emotionally abuse their partner as a way of surviving the stress of an emotional relationship. So this doesn't make it right in any way, shape or form. So we're gonna make a mess out of a mess. We become emotionally abusive because we love our partners too much. 
we lose ourselves in the relationship, love becomes distorted by feelings of insecurity or abandonment, and of course, the fear of intimacy. Expressions of behavior, because I'm calling all of us out on our shit on this one, is that we may threaten to leave, which, oh my God, dude, I have done this so many times. I've literally packed my shit and left multiple times. Okay, any of my exes can tell you, yes, she has. She's fucking crazy for doing it. And I hate it because it's created trauma even down to like their kids being involved. Terrible. So that's one. We say something deliberately hurtful, knowing the effect it will have. I've done that before. The silent treatment. (sighs) That one is basically ghosting. And of course, the ultimate withholding love, affection, sex. So they will hopefully suffer. This all becomes emotional abuse when it becomes a consistent pattern. Sometimes they said to be used, that they would expect it, or at some point you just become numb to it, saying shit like, oh, you're just having another episode, you'll be back in my bed in a few days. Like they just become numb to this behavior, it doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore. So we have to face some hard truths that at times can be debilitating to even reflect on. However, in order to see growth, we need to tend the soil of our soul before we can even plant the seeds. So this shit's going to be really hard to do, y'all, but we're going to be able to do it and we're going to get through it together. So here we go. For all of the reasons above, borderlines, or at least all of my romantic relationships have failed or have fallen victim to my emotional debilitating lack of maturity to maintain a healthy adult romantic relationship. I need to focus on the root cause of my shit by acknowledging the original abusers, finding that space to forgive so that I can begin maturing to have a healthy relationship with myself first and pour that into others consciously. Finding someone grounded or at least Doshically aligned is the first step for me when it comes to a partner. But more importantly, it's remembering what these two gurus once said. And I'd love to leave you with this. Ram Das, remember, the more conscious person in the relationship will give the other room to grow. And Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, One can only give to others to the extent that one can give to themselves only. So let's begin with applying those words of wisdom to ourselves. And we'll be diving into emotional abuse and its association to BPD and company throughout the duration of our podcast and how it links back to borderline bipolar and the rest. And we'll also be introducing Ayurveda and doshas as we begin to progress from these uh, now from this episode and, and moving forward. So you'll get to learn more about how we integrate Ayurveda into our mental health as we continue to evolve on our journey. And if you wanna know more about Ayurveda and you wanna know what your dosha is, like I said earlier, head on over to jbyfnola.org you're going to go over to ayurveda take the assessment test and this will introduce you to ayurveda there's also that will give you insight on what your dosha is and it will also let you uh, know how to balance your dosha so we're going to start talking about that and how it aligns back to our borderline personality and complex ptsd and bipolar disorders Um, and as well as suicide ideation and where that stems from, from the root cause of that when we get to that episode. Um, So, but I'll be leaving you again, like I said, some resources in the show notes below um, that have helped me along my journey and that I encourage you to utilize as it helps you on yours. So without further ado, I will see you in the next episode, y'all. Namaste and be well. Take care. Bye. 
it means so much to me that you took the time to do this. I want to invite you to join my community if you've listened this far and like what you've heard and email jaiboxyoga at gmail.com. Also, please do share this podcast, rate this podcast, review it, and please do continue to support by sharing it with your community so we can provide holistic care to our loved ones. There will be a ton of resources that I will continue to provide for you, so please do continue to check the show notes. And as always, I'm Christina. So much love, your host of The Light in My Shadow. And I will see you in the next episode. Namaste and be well.